Hello there, YouTube. I am Nicholas Stevo, and it is time for our team builder for week four of the GBA versus the Montreal Hatsalls, who are coached by Aster. Uh, these team builders never take that long, but if you would like to jump straight into the battle, there is an annotation in the description for you. Um, so, for this matchup, you can see uh, Aster's team there on the side, and yep, we're facing Megalopony. Never fun to face in leagues. Uh, you definitely want to be the person who's utilizing Megalopony as opposed to the person who has to face it. Now, how are we going to face off against this? I. We'll, we'll see how this goes. My team is actually pretty straightforward this week, which is a little bit of a change here. Um, pretty standard Mega Alakazam with just enough speed to outspeed a Megalopony. Uh, signal Beam is just there to give me a way to hit Zoroark, that way I don't have to rely on Focus Blast. And the Substitute allows me to sub up on something like a Scallopy that's going for Protect, or um, say something like a Choice Pokemon is locked in here. I could see maybe Choice Scarf uh, Zapdos or even Scarf Darmanitan. Um, if I can get a Substitute up, Mega Alakazam can do a lot of damage to his team, and outside of that, Early game, I can just bring it in and fire off Psychics pretty easily. Up next we have Lycanroc. You will see that I have the Steadfast ability there. Uh, that's just in case I get into a fake out position with Lopunny. If Lopunny is trying to fake me out for extra damage and then go for a move, hey, I get a free speed boost there, basically. Um, I did go with Swords Dance, the Rock Crunch, and Stone Edge just to have good neutral coverage against his entire team. And a Cellar Rock is nice to stop the Scallopede and the, uh, possibly, I could see a Scarf Darmanitan coming here from getting out of hand. Uh, up next we have our Executor. I really struggled with what to put on Executor this week. I ended up going with a specially offensive Executor with, oh, whoops, this is a typo. I actually ended up going with the Dragonium Z. Um, I tested several sets, actually, with the Furium Z. But we did end up going with Dragonium Z. It just seemed more uh, reliable as far as being able to one-shot the Zapdos or um, with a Trick Room up, being able to just, hey, we're going to erase one Pokemon on this team, uh, barring Sylveon, of course. Um, but yeah, that, this is not the right... Huh. Anyways, this is Draco Meteor. <laughs> you can see that I went through a few iterations of this team. There we go, that's correct. So the Physical Woodhammer, Draco Meteor, and Flamethrower uh, with the Draconium Z, Dragonium Z, excuse me. Um, yeah. Up next we have our Culverberry Delbys, just there in case the Zoroark is disguised as something and either I don't realize it, that it is, or uh, if he's trying to go for knockoff, sucker punch, that type of thing. That allows Delbys to live a hit. I did bring Synthesis this week, just because uh, I kept getting into like weird little Star Wars against the likes of Sylveon or against um, Mudsdale in a mock battle, I had that happen. Melodic, even if it's max physically defensive and it's burned, can't take two power whips, so uh, this was a really nice check here. I did have just enough speed on there to outspeed something like an uninvested fat Gorgeist or Gorgeist Super. I, I promise I'll use the word fat with a PH, not an FA. I'm not here to to pumpkin shame or anything like that. Um, Anchor Shot is good neutral coverage against the majority of his team. Bar Zapdos, but I really don't want Delmize to be my Pokemon hitting Zapdos anyway because I can't really damage it too well. After that, we have our Choice Scarf Rotom Heat. This was another Pokemon that I really struggled with what I should bring to this battle because I had specs work really, really well, but then it kept coming down to, oh, now you're all sped by a low penny. So I did go with Choice Scarf just to have that extra insurance in the back that I could outspeed Low Penny if it came down to it. Um, also, if he lets me, I can get a Choice Scarf burn off on something, especially if he doesn't bring Darmanitan. That would be very, very nice. Uh, and then finally, we have our Charty Berry Araquanid. I'm trying the Trapper set. Uh, not really in my playstyle to try to trap things, but with a Melodic, that is very, very easy to trap. I wish I could trap Gorgeist. That would be nice too, but... If I get a Toxic off on Melodic, or if I get a Toxic off on Gorgeist, or Barbarical, or Mudsdale, this thing has done its job. 
It also has the Charty Berry to not only dodge the Rock Slide from Darmanitan, but that helps with taking a hit from Mudsdale, or if Barbarical has not boosted with Shell Smash, I can take that hit too with all that HP investment. I did throw the rest of my um, investment into Spadef because with that investment, if he brings a more defensive Zapdos, I can live three discharges and rest up after the first two, so that's nice as well. Uh, so that'll allow me to at least get a little bit of extra chip damage on him with liquidation or something like that. Um, but so that's the team. Pretty quick team builder. What are we expecting from Aster? We are definitely expecting the. Um, I he basically has to bring Zapdos to this matchup, especially because um, he just doesn't have good swap ins for Electric. Like he has Mudsdale, but that doesn't really like taking the fire move. So Zapdos, especially defensive one, is his next best deal. And I did run the calcs for a physically offensive um, executor, even with the Dragonium, and just especially offensive was more reliable. Uh, so I'm definitely expecting the, the Zapdos, and then after that, I could very certainly see, of course, Megalopony, but Scallopede and Darmanitan, those two are just such a potent offensive U-turning core that I could very easily see them being annoying. Uh, Barbarical can come here too just because he can Shell Smash pretty easily on some of my Pokemon. Uh, so that's going to be just, I want to keep Barbarical off the field for the majority of this match. I don't see something like um, Zoroark coming per se just because I have switch ins for Dark type moves. Granted, Zoroark does get some pretty neat coverage, so I could see him bringing it, but that's not on my short list. So, uh, so yeah, that's the team. Let's hop right into the battle, and thanks for watching the team builder. Alrighty, so thank you for watching the team builder. If you did not, you can see my choice scarf, Rotom Heat, Bulky Araquanid, Substitute Alakazam, Colbert Berry Delmize, uh, Steadfast Lycanroc, and my special attacking Dragonium uh, Executor, uh, with Trick Room, of course. For him, you can definitely see he kind of brought exactly what he needed for this battle. Uh, he really didn't need to bring anything but a mix of these six, maybe take off the Google guys and put one other thing on there. With this uh, matchup though, Rotom matches up well against everything that he has, because I just need to put damage on basically any member of his team. It also stops him from leaning off with Barbarical and setting up the Shell Smash early. So he leads off with his little punny, which is fine by me. That's exactly why I have the Choice Scarf Rotom here. Uh, I figure this is my chance to find out if he has Fake Out, because if he's gonna go for it, he's gonna use it now just to kind of scout out damage on me or that type of thing. And I don't mind him knowing that I'm Scarfed either, because that will scare things out from coming in because they'll be in range for being revenge killed. So he should know from that damage that I'm an offensive Rotom. And he brings in his uh, Zapdos, and I went for Volt Switch here. And from the damage, I was like, oh, awesome. That looks like some sort of max HP build. I don't know what the investment is, but I can definitely KO it from there with my uh, Dragonium Z Draco Meteor. And so he goes for Hidden Power, which turns out to be Ice, but since he's so bulky, I wasn't really that afraid of that. And we're just gonna go straight for that Z Draco Meteor. Um, like, based on what I expected here, there was no way that he was living this move, especially with the prior damage from Volt Switch, even after Leftovers. Um, he would either have to be like a Max Max build to live on one HP. He did tell me it was one HP. And he had like a 220 investment, I believe. And so I think I got a absolute minimum roll on that uh, Dragonium Z right there. Um, here, expecting him to roost, I just went straight for my Trick Room. That way I could go for a Draco Meteor afterwards and hope that he would try to KO me. But you know, the proper play is to just keep roosting. Um, but I was hoping for a crit here and once again, just like, right out of that range and a crit wasn't even needed there i could have KO'd him from that range too because he wasn't he's well now he's above 65 percent but before he was like right in that 50 to 60 range so i could have KO'd him with the draco meteor and i just it was just like barely not there so that was very annoying <laughs> of course zapdos one of my favorite pokemon so that's why i love it it's so legendarily you no know, just bulky but knowing that he's a more specially defensive uh, variant, that means I am gonna go straight out to my Araquanid here and try to drop a Toxic on him. He actually ends up swapping and going out to Gorgias to take the Toxic. 
and I'm okay with this. I'm just going to stay in here and use Liquidation because if he has uh, Leech Seed or Will-O-Wisp or something and tries to predict to swap out, I don't have a really good reason to swap out. And this is the small Gorgeist form, so that means it has less defense and HP as well. So I am doing better to just stay in here and um, I didn't want anything else to get toxic either, which turned out to be the play there, which means he probably has Synthesis. But if he has Synthesis versus my rest, I'm going to be able to outlast him there, I believe. So he ends up switching out into his Metagross and I really, really wish I had just kept going for Liquidation because I could have loved that damage on the Metagross. Uh, even if he were a bulky Metagross, that would have been fine. Uh, the Frisk is nice to find out that he's Culberberry, so that probably means he's at least bulky enough to um, take a hit. Uh, but I just want damage here. We can see the damage from Flamethrower. If I had hit him with the Liquidation, this thing would have been KO'd. But that is not the case there. And you'll notice I didn't set up Trick Room. I knew he could, if he had a, you know, a move slot for Bullet Punch, he could 2 KO me with Bullet Punch anyway. And I didn't want to deal with that. So I just went straight for the damage there. Uh, he does surprise me with Reflect. That means that my uh, Raquinid is not going to be able to KO him now. But if that damage had been doubled earlier, that definitely he would have already been KO'd from the Flamethrower. So that was a very good bring on his part. Uh, my Arachnid though does have enough HP that I can just stay in here. Unfortunately for me, he gets the attack boost from Meteor Mash. So if he's going to keep on doing that, I will be forced out eventually. But because I get up my rest, I get back to full HP. And mainly be I would have stayed in if he hadn't gotten an attack boost. But because he did, now's my chance to swap out to something here. I was going into Rotom hoping for maybe a Thunder Punch that I could resist even better than the Meteor Mash, but that is not the case. Um, and now my HP after the Meteor Mash with the plus one attack boost is lower. I'm missing two HP points to be able to swap back in to Stealth Rocks. So I'm just going to stay in here and keep on with the Thunderbolt train on the Zapdos. Uh, and this is where Specs would have been an amazing bring just because the Zapdos is so bulky. Uh, Specs would have caused the Zapdos to take more damage on the first turn, which means that he would have been in range of my Executor. So Scarf just was not the right bring for this battle. Um, I, I stand by my reasoning for bringing Scarf, but it just didn't work out with what he ended up bringing. Um, so this uh, Thunderbolt Roost War isn't going anywhere. I don't even have my Thunderbolts PP maxed because I didn't want to use PP max on a Thunderbolt <laughs> when you get so many of them to start. Uh, so I'm just going to stay in here and continue going for it. He does go for Protect with his Solipede, which is fine. I at least will get to see some sort of coverage here or just Poison Jab or whatever. Cool. Uh, I do get to stop him from setting up with Swords Dance, so I'm okay with that. And we see Life Orb, which means that's not his Z user, so that kind of solidifies the Babaracle as a Z user. Uh, even with um, the Life Orb, he can't really hurt Delmize too badly. So I'm just going to bring in my Delmize and go straight for the offensive move. Um, Anchor Shot was my move of choice there in case he tried to go out into um, Barbaracle. And plus, Anchor Shot can't miss and Shadow Claw is a little bit weak. So that was my, my preferred offensive move there. Uh, he does go for Meteor Mash once again with the Metagross. This thing... Mm, that thing should have been KO'd, so I took unnecessary damage on my Delmize. Uh, Anchor Shot's able to take down the Delmize. And now we're into crunch time in the late game here because I can't switch anything into this Megalop Honey. And so unfortunately that means that my Delmize is going to have to go down. Uh, on the plus side, that means I get to bring in my Alakazam and go for the Mega Evolution. He doesn't have uh, Metagross anymore, he didn't bring the Zoroark. And so I get to go for my coverage move or, you know, just go for Psychic or I can, I can go for Substitute. I can go for anything. I did learn um, that the uh, Zapdos had 220 investment uh, with the max HP. So Psyshock would have been a stronger bring here because he's right out of range. I did kind of learn a lesson from last time in trying to set up a Substitute when I should just be attacking. Um, so I am able to finish off this Zapdos finally. Just, I feel like the, the damage rolls there kind of robbed me. And I shouldn't have been in that situation in the first place. But expecting a protect on his end, I'm just going to go for a substitute on my own end here. And um, I was like, awesome. 
because now he has to go for a move to break my sub or swap out, but he has pin missile. And that is, you see that moves are super effective a lot, but pin missile to break a Mega Alakazam sub after outspeeding it with speed boost and protect, and he even got the three hits that he needed to, to take me out. Like that is a super effective move. Like holy crap, that was thinking leagues ahead of me. I. I knew that Scallopy learned Pin Missile, but I never thought anyone would bring it against me. So fantastic bring on his part. That sucks. And with my Araquanid asleep, it's not going to be able to take these two poison jabs. I did want to make sure that his uh, Scallopy was in range of my Lycanroc there, so I needed to make sure he took some life orb damage. I also could have gone straight out into my Lycanroc and uh, tried to go for the roll, but I was just having some bad times with rolls there, so I wanted to ensure that he took some more life orb damage before I went for the Assault Rock. Um, but all that basically does is save me some differential because I'm not going to be able to outspeed the Mega Law Pony. He has no reason to go for Fake Out, and that means that we lose this battle 0-2. So uh, I think Aster, that was his first victory thus far, and that means our losing streak continues further on into the darkness but where there is darkness that means there are shadows and so we are not giving up and i felt like i brought the right team this week uh the roles were kind of unfortunate i do think i made a lot of the right plays for example like bringing in the araquanid for the toxic or just going straight for the psychic with my Alakazam, like those are all more offensively oriented plays to put me in a good position. Because you can't do anything about the rules. All you can do is make the plays that you can. So when it comes to plays, the, the pin missile is what really sealed the deal here. I hope that that has a contender for play of the week there. Cause then at least I can get in on, on, on that. My name can be mentioned in play of the week, but thank you all so much uh, for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And we will check out next week's battle, which is going to be up against Pokemon and the New Orleans Pelipers. I'll talk to you all later. Have a fantastic week.